very often people say you have to be tolerant and i think that's wrong you have to be accepting because the minute you say you have to be tolerant you are already suffering another person or another belief and i don't think that's the way to a more united humanity to tolerate difference you know you can say i don't agree with you but you have to accommodate that person's belief or that person's point of view i mean you you can say that you know i'm sorry but i don't i, I don't like these tenets of this religion or i don't like the fact that i might be forced into doing this this and this but that that person and that person's views have a right to exist and the gulbenkian foundation had done a three year study and it, this is something that bothered me deeply and i thought that in order to understand violence so that you didn't so that you could actually deal with trying to reduce violence in society you had to understand the mind of the violator it was not useful at all to only sympathize with the victim because what you needed to understand is why the violator was driven to that violence so a colleague of mine who i was working with a director in britain and i created a show based on the gulbenkian's research called v for dot 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 meaning v is not for victory v today in our society is for violence and where we were trying to see violence at all scales from the hitler kind of thing that so pervades our society today saying you know we are the superior race and we shall destroy everybody who comes into our place and you know this sort of thing to a mother saying to her child if you don't do your homework the bogey man will take you and we were doing and we were doing a pacifist and we were trying to understand what would a pacifist do if a man came into his house and raped his daughter is it pacifism to not do anything is it non pacifist for him to try and save his daughter by maybe killing the man maybe holding him maybe becoming physical what is it that is pacifist and i think i think given those circumstances one would turn violent because there wasn't time to sit him down and say you know why is rape wrong and why is it wrong to intimidate that's not the situation one is in what i do try and do is how do i use my arts and my talking and my writing to try and show those triggers to people so that they become people who don't let themselves get to that trigger that's the kind of education of non violence that i involve myself with the privilege that i got as a child and still have disallows me from not being the fighter for justice that i would like to be and the speaker against injustice i also have managed to build for myself my own following if you like uh and i don't i think i think i would fade away if i stopped speaking stop fighting stop stop drawing attention to it i think it is it is the very fiber of what makes me me don't think i don't feel very upset and depressed and and say nothing is changing i do and i have friends and partners and children and 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 close close friends from many different parts of the world who say to me you can't you just can't you you won't live with yourself violence that we impose on ourselves as well because we are also self violent the kind of um the kind of things that we hold ourselves up to is often self flagellation and we are not even aware of it but we permit society to put us in a mental warp stage where we unleash the demons in ourselves and are unable to bring out the light to quell them and to make peace with ourselves a lot of our work is about accepting the self so that we can accept others working on the self so that we don't need to 
take out our frustration on others in the form of different kinds of violence. 